It seems like one of those days that Mr. Rogers talked about. Mr. Rogers would always come in, and I don't know if you remember his character on TV, but it was a children's program to try and influence and affect good things in, a, in the children's lives. And Mr. Rogers would always say, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And I don't know where you are or how your day is, but it sure seems like a beautiful day in the neighborhood where I'm at. John Smizer here. I'm from Southern California, and it's good to be with you. Now, Mr. Rogers had a good effect on all the people that he had contact with, adults, particularly children, because he was sensitive and he listened. Now, there was a story that was told of a gentleman that was taking a walk along the beach. And as he was uh, walking down the beach, there had been a storm the night before. And many, hundreds or even thousands of starfish had been washed upon the shore. And there was the uh, multitude of fish, or the, the, the starfish there on the, on the seashore. And as he walked along, he noticed on down the shore, there was a, a young boy playing. And that young boy, he would pick up a starfish and he would throw it out into the ocean. And, and as the gentleman neared the, the young boy, he says, what are you doing? I'm, I'm helping these starfish. And, and the gentleman says, but you can't help all of these starfish. And the young boy says, you're right, I can't help them all. But I did for that one. And it's in our lives ways that we can affect good things in people's lives. We can't affect everybody, but those that come near us, those in our neighborhood. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 30. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Here in this passage of Luke chapter 4, we've heard it's read to us, and it's a wonderful statement about what Christ has come to do, how he has uh, anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. God the Father has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And it was at that point that he had enumerated or he had 
spoken to the people that he was coming to minister to, the hope that he was bringing, the, the encouragement, the freedom. Now, people didn't always accept that. People didn't always like that. And as he went into his hometown, Nazareth, you know, there was a, 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 a grumbling. Well, this is the carpenter's son. And, and isn't he the child of Mary? And all the innuendos, the things that were there. And it was at that point that Jesus said, you know, a, a prophet is without honor in his own land. There's a, a sense in which uh, verse 24 says, Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Now, I wonder in your hometown or, or the place you've grown up, are there those people that you discount because you used to know them when they were in elementary school or, or in high school or the challenges they had in life? Do you discount them as not being able to speak into your life? I had a friend whose name was Nick, and Nick had a wonderful way of uh, creativity. Now, Nick went on to be a counselor, one who would come alongside and he would encourage people and help them through their challenges. But I always remembered the, the Nick who was running down the riverbed and making movies and playing uh, games in the riverbed, and, and I never saw him as the Dr. Nick. He was a valued person, but because I had known him earlier, I, I didn't really see him in that elevated position. There may be times when you have had that challenge. For me, it came in the church that I grew up in. The church I grew up in, I began to serve there in ministry. Now, there were deacons there that had gone to my parents and asked that they would talk to me about carving my name in the pew. And the parents talked to me. And so, as a young boy, I, I had those issues. And uh, as I continued to minister, I loved him. His name was Don. And a, a, a gentleman named Don came out my door. And he was one of those deacons who came to talk to my parents. And as he went out my door, as I was serving as an associate or an assistant pastor, he would shake my head and greet me, shake my hand. But he would also go, oh, John because those things that he knew about me. Now, in Christ's life, there were those areas that, as he was growing up, not that he carved his name in the pew, I don't mean that, but I mean that there were those things that people had thought about him and the games he played and the ways he had touched other friends' lives, that people in some ways could not see him as the Messiah. The, the one promised by God who was going to deliver Israel. And he proclaimed here in, in, the, in the synagogue that that was his purpose. That was the reason he's come. But they weren't ready to listen to him. And it was at that point, he had talked about it in another place, that their lack of faith, that there could not be many miracles done there. And I'm wondering, have you felt that? A sense in which people have judged you or, or con condemned you even in some ways that you could not speak in a, in a positive way. The other side of that is, are there people in your life that just the same way Jesus came to, to do good things, that, that they're really wanting to do good things, but you and I hold things against them? We might judge them in ways that they, they, they can't be all of that. They can't do that. Well, that was the struggle for Nazareth, that they weren't ready to receive their Messiah. Just think what it would have been like if his hometown would have raised up and celebrated this son of David. What if they had sang Hosanna to the highest? What if they had celebrated his coming, but they didn't because they had that background, that history. 
Christ did go on and was their Savior. He went in and gave His life for you and for me. I pray that you don't cut people off. You don't not listen to them because of history. And I encourage you, don't give up. Don't stop if there's a ministry you're working in that people may judge you. Today, as we live life, I want to encourage you, as Jesus came, and He came to touch people's lives who came to Him, who were calling on His name. When those who were blind would call out His name, He would ask them to be brought to Him. Those children that the mothers brought, He blessed them. For those who were sick, He healed them. What is it in your life today that Christ can do to lift you up? Draw near to Him. Don't be like those who were in Nazareth who, uh, well, I tried that one time and I didn't really find it that effective. It's a relationship with God. It's a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we live our lives. Draw near to Him and He will bring freedom and He will heal and He will lift you up. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today we thank you that you sent your only begotten Son and that, Lord, as we turn to Him, as we see Him as our Savior, our Messiah, the one promised to come and deliver us, Lord, we will find uh, answers in our own lives. We will find uh, solutions to issues we're struggling with through the Holy Spirit bearing witness to Christ Jesus. Lord, will you work in each of our lives in whatever issue we're facing today? We pray on, on your power, Lord, to strengthen us. Guide us this day, Lord. We thank you for your love and grace and blessing in our lives. In your precious and holy name, amen. <music>